welcome you to the Texas High School Hall of Fame in Carmine, Texas. Uh, this is our Hall of Fame that started in 1971 with our Texas Association of Basketball Coaches. And uh, we've inducted over 200 people over the years, usually with about five to six people per year. And uh, we have some great legends that are coaches, players, and, uh, and contributors and make up all the uh, Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, this is our display for Hardin Jefferson High School when Coach Charles Brightham was the head coach and won the state championship. And uh, we have his state championship team from the year before. And uh, we also have a state championship trophy and um, Coach of the Year trophy with Coach Brightham, which is now the UIL executive director. And the ball signed by all the players when they won the state championship up in the right-hand corner. Uh, this is a collection of whistles I started collecting. I've been collecting basketball memorabilia for 40 years. I always wanted to do museums, so whistles were kind of easy to find, not easy to find, but handy to find and easy to put up. So there's over 150 whistles there. And this is a case dedicated to our referees, which is real important. The oldest trophy we have in the museum here is a, actually a tro trophy from Kansas when they played for one state championship, all the schools. It was dated 1919. This sign here is a dealership sign for Chuck Taylor Converse All-Star Shoes. And this was a shoe that everybody wore back in the 40s and 50s up through the, the 70s before all the leather shoes came out. But it's a very rare find to find a neon with uh, Chuck Taylor on Converse All-Stars. That's an old one right there. Okay, what we have here is uh, Temple Tucker who played at Bowie High School and then went on to Rice University and was an All-American there. It was like a high draft choice for the NBA, but elected not to go to the NBA. This is his All-Star uniform, uh, South 34 All-Stars. And I have a nice display for him in the museum. Below it, you have a scoreboard, okay, that's kind of the in-between one. This is one where the kids like to go into the school and we used to call it, we like to break the clock because it only had so many digits. You can only go to 99. So if you scored 100 points like uh, Harden Jefferson did every game over 108 per game, then they broke the clock many, many times. Uh, here we are presenting the uh, plaques for Mr. Basketball and Miss Basketball from the state of Texas. Started back in 1983 with the Texas Association of Basketball Coach to its current date from this past year. And we have, if you look at the board, you'll find several players that went on to be great pro players like Larry Johnson, um, Chris Bosch, just to name a couple, okay. Then on the women's side, we have Angela Lawson from Longview, Tiffany Jackson, which is a great pro player, Brittany Griner, 6'8", first person to dunk in the uh, state championship games. This is our round top Carmine display. The girls won three state championships back in 1966, 70, and 71 when they played half-court basketball. And these are some artifacts we have, or memo beer have, from, from the teams that played back then. And uh, we had three different coaches. We had Reuben Wunderlich that won the first one, and Floyd Etzel, which won the second one. And uh, we have a good story on him. He was drafted to go in the Army. He had to give up his coaching position. Another coach took the team for the following year, and he won a state championship. And his name was Coach Odom. First space is for Temple Tucker. And uh, Temple was the only player from Bowie High School to play on four state championships. And then went on to Rice to be an All-American and was drafted in the first round with Wilt Chamberlain, but elected not to play in the NBA. This display on Olympians is all former Texas high school players that played in the Olympics, which we have a great collection of men and women and uh, we have several pieces of memorabilia, like a seat cushion from 1932 Olympics in Los Angeles, California. We have a actual torch, Olympic torch, that was carried by Jackie Robinson when they had the Olympics here in the United States. And he played for Baylor, was an All-American, and led his team to the Final Four. This is our display for the Rockets, back uh, early on when they first came here from San Diego. And uh, then they won two world championships back to back in 94 and 95. And uh, we had Texas high school players that also played on these teams, uh, mainly Robert Reed from St. Mary's University. 
and, and we've had several others that, like Craig Elo, he played with the Rockets. All right, Final Four cushion up there. I used to go to all the Final Fours, and we all, I've always been collecting memorabilia for 40 years. So half this collection of the museum belongs to me, and the other half belongs to the Texas Association of Basketball Coaches. And uh, we don't have too much on San Antonio, but they're one of my favorite teams. And I look for them to do real well this year. It might go all the way. Uh, we've, we're lucky we're the only state in the union that has three professional basketball teams, with uh, San Antonio winning five, or on, working on their six, and Houston had won two, and the Dallas Mar Mavericks won one, which is really outstanding. Uh, this display is dedicated to Coach Don Coleman, a uh, legendary coach, and uh, won 81 district games at Mo Houston Memorial. I uh, went to state one state in 1966 and made it to state like seven times during his career. Uh, the South All-Star jersey is for Jerry Kroll, which is one of Don's players. And uh, he still holds a record for scoring 45 points in the All-Star game, the Texas High School Coaches All-Star game in 1966. This next two displays are ones for Craig Elo mainly and uh, Spud Webb. Craig Elo played at Lubbock Monterey High School and went on to play at Texas Tech, was outstanding, was, and went on to play at Washington State, and then played pro ball for several years and uh, played with the Houston Rockets and played with the Cavaliers, famous play where Michael Jordan is making the winning shot in the three-point attempt and he's on the floor. Uh, this display is for Spud Webb, number four for the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, his fame is that he won the slam dunk contest in 1983. Uh, his stature was like five foot eight, and had a 48 inch vertical jump, and uh, he now uh, works with Dallas Mavericks uh, in their youth organization and uh, still working with basketball. This displays for Houston Wheatley, their famous team back in the 70s where Jackie Carr uh, took the team there and, and won like three state championships in a row, and they were just unbeatable at the time until Cy Fair with Ronnie Truitt upset him in one year by playing a slow down game and had a very good job and, and beat them out. Bill Kruger is one of our uh, famous coaches in the Hall of Fame and has over uh, 1,050 wins in his career and uh, he had the distinction of playing in a coaches classic where we had four teams, coaches that had over 1,000 wins and uh, you had Bill Kruger you had uh, Robert Hughes from Fort Worth, Dunbar. This play on Smiley, Lewis Qualls led him to the state tournament. He was the first big seven-footer to come out of the state of Texas and uh, took his team to the, the state championship back in 1959. Uh, the box in the top here is actually a Converse Chuck Connors box. It's very rare. It's called a standard railroad container. All shoes, even uh, basketball shoes and regular shoes are shipped in containers like this across the United States on trains way before trucks. And uh, that's a very rare piece to find with their embossed emblem on there like that. Texas Tech uh, won national championship with Martha, Martha Sharp up at, uh, in Lubbock, Texas, and had a great player playing for her, which is Cheryl Swoops which is like the Michael Jordan of girls basketball. She's done everything. Uh, Duncanville is dominant power, still is today. And uh, Sandra Meadows is a legendary coach in our Hall of Fame, also led her teams to several state championships, plus one year was undefeated. Space, we have are some items dedicated to girls basketball. Um, back way back before they had the UIL, they actually played uh, amateur league, AAU, and there's documentation of all the stuff that happened just in this book like for, just for fun. Um, Cammie Etheridge is a great player that played for the University of Texas when they were undefeated. And uh, we have Joe Rankin Schneider who still coaches today and is, is a coach on Olympic team too. And uh, she's up in oh Lubbock, Coronado I think. And we have some memorabilia from the Houston Comets down here. Bobblehead and stuff, several things like that. This uniform of Tommy C Jones from Crane High School. The Cranes, number 32. He was a legendary high school player in the Hall of Fame that scored about 40 points a game. Just outstanding, great player. Our next base, we have Curly Reisinger, which uh, 
Coach had, had several, he's in the Hall of Fame, and actually coached the last few years, he was legally blind, which is amazing. Rennie Hannibut played at Bowie High School. We have a lot of people from Bowie, and she went on to be a great player at Texas Tech. Bill Overall played at San Marcos High School for legendary coach Bill Kruger when they won the state championship. They won three consecutive district championships and he averaged like 29.2 points per game. Our other Hall of Fame coach is Fred Williams from Hebert High School, which has been closed since a while and uh, was an outstanding coach there too. Jim Ree is a famous coach from in our Hall of Fame that has the distinction of winning four state championships, two at Kerrville Tivy, one at Ingram Tom Moore, and one at Dumas, three different divisions there, and uh, quite quite a coach there. We have several pieces of memorabilia from James Campbell when he coached at uh, Port Arthur Lincoln. We have a picture over here of Troy House, which leads the scoring in the state of Texas with like 48 points a game, which we play for Ingram Tom Moore and also played for Coach Jim Reed. This space is dedicated to two outstanding high school basketball players in our Hall of Fame, Stanley Bonowitz and David Wesley. Stan played for San Antonio East Central for his dad, Stan Bonowitz, and won a state championship uh, with a team that he played together with way back in junior high, and they basically were undefeated each year. And his senior year scored over 105 points per game. David Wesley has a good history uh, at Longview High School. He's one of those players that played in the NBA, but he didn't get drafted. He went the hard way. He had to go Division D and play overseas before he worked to his way and became a very good uh, defensive player in the NBA. Bo Outlaw, um, who played for the University of Houston and was also twice the Southwest Conference Player of the Year back then, went on to play uh, and finish up his career with Orlando Magic in 1997. Coach O.W. Fallis was a Hall of Fame coach for us and uh, led La Mesa to three state championships and uh, was outstanding coach uh, in his day. Won several state championships and uh, three, obviously, in 67, 60, and 75. And this is a display for him. Uh, this is our Texas High School Hall of Fame, started in 1971. And we have legendary coaches, legendary players, contributors, and uh, some from every year since then, usually about five to six, maybe seven sometimes, and sometimes only four. Coach Cotton Robinson from Buna High School, coached all his years there at Buna, all 15, won five state championships with a famous coach. Uh, everybody ran the Buna offense back then, where he had his best shooter on the same side of his best postman. They ran kind of a high-low double post and his best rebound on the back side, and a point guard which worked it to either side, wouldn't work it out of the middle, he'd work it to the side to get the ball to the post. And they were famous about working on specific shots from that area only that they'd shoot them in a game. So they drilled themselves over and over where it's automatic. Coach Charles Bradup, our executive director of the UIL, played for Coach Cotton Robinson, and as a boy, he used to walk across from his house to the gym and watch the games being played under Coach Robinson. All right, this display we have for dominant coaches that hold national records, Coach Lita Andrews and Coach Robert Hughes. Coach Hughes had 312 career wins in 47 years at Fort Worth Dunbar. Coach Lita Andrews had 1,416 wins at Granbury High School, where she coached for 49 years. She also played at Granbury High School and was an All-State player there and was inducted in the Hall of Fame as a player. Uh, Cheryl Swoots played for uh, Brownfield High School and then went on to play at Texas Tech and she's considered to be the Michael Jordan of girls basketball. She's done it all. Four world championships in the NBA, uh, four times Olympian. Our next space we have Larry Johnson's jersey uh, when he played for the Orlando Magic but he was a high school player that played at Dallas Skyline under the coach J.D. Mayo and uh, he was famous for winning a national championship at University of Las Vegas. Uh, Athens High School has several Hall of Famers, including Jim Katz, uh, the coach, and several of his players here that were inducted in the first two years or three years of the Hall of Fame. They won national championships, real national championship tournaments, 
They won in 1928 and 1929 and lost another one in the finals uh, the year before that. And uh, they're quite legendary. This legendary basketball is a reach basketball. And I started getting autographs back in the early 80s uh, trying to find famous coaches that coached the game and would contribute to the ball going to me opening up a museum one, one time or another. The first, first intro I got was Red Auerbach. I have Dean Smith, Jack Gardner, John Williams, David Counts is a player and coached a little bit too. Ben Carnavelli, Frank McGuire, John Kuma, which coached the Minneapolis Lakers when Slater Martin played. Ray Meyer, Abe Lemons, Bob Veneta, Harry Litwick, Hank Iba, Joe Dean, Marv Harshman, Ozzie Cowles, John Wooden, Rick Heron, Big House Gaines, John McClendon, Grady Lewis, and that's the accumulation of all the signatures, plus Slater Martin. He's our, Slater Martin, I've got a room we're gonna walk into, and he's the first high school player in the state of Texas to play in the NBA, and uh, played on five world championship teams, four with the Minneapolis Lakers and one with the St. Louis Hawks. There's a great story on him, but he's our first player inducted in the Hall of Fame. The ball in the middle is the Texas high school basketball coaches. And my idea on this was to submit it to the Guinness World Record book as having the most wins from any state in the union and from head coaches that coach basketball, both men and girls. And my idea was to get 50,000 wins. I have now surpassed 75,000 wins. So you just have to submit it. And the other ones on the left is also a Hall of Fame ball to the head coaches. All right, in this booth here we have a uh, Areas dedicated to Richard Lewis and Shaquille O'Neal. Richard Lewis played for Elif Elsick High School, 6'10", came out of high school, did not play any uh, college basketball, and went, wound up going to the Seattle Super Sonics, and uh, where he became an all-star player, and, and wound up kept finishing up his career with uh, the Miami Heat, where they won a world title when he was there. Uh, San Antonio Cole, uh, the home of Shaquille O'Neal in high school. He's undefeated his senior year, and virtually there's no comparison to the way he was in high school in the pros, because he was more of a multi-dexterous player then. He could shoot the three, he could make free shots, he could bring the ball down the court. He's very active. His size then was about 6'11 and about 275. So it makes a lot of difference being able to be mobile like that. Outstanding, he played on three, three world championship teams. One of our posters of Shaquille O'Neal when he first came out in the NBA and when he played for the Orlando Magic. And uh, just a good picture of how, how his youthfulness is and, and how his weight is like uh, very made up for a mobile player. This is our last last group here in 2015 of our, our Hall of Famers. You've got TJ Ford that played at University of Texas. Mike Smith was coach at Victoria High School. Leroy Larson coached at uh, Rock High School as a distinction of, of winning over 1,500 wins and by coaching both boys and girls at the same time in each year. And uh, Wayman Jake Buchanan was, was a great player from Rick Carter Riverside up in Dallas. Laura Dawson won a state championship at 80th Elsick. And Riley Lee Snyder from Natchez uh, won a state championship there. And his son also um, has won two state championships at, at Natchez. Another famous team we have 60 miles from Carmine is Snook High School. They won seven state championships with the Horn Brothers and Donnie Victory. And a legendary school and coaches that played tough defense and played great offense where they controlled the tempo, but their defense was notorious about man-to-man, -man, pick you up all over the court and just chew your numbers off. Their best season, they were 52-0 and zero in uh, in Class B in 1966, still a record. Of course, nobody else can get win 52 games now. The max you can win is probably about 40 games. Richard Lewis, we had three Texas high school players from the state that played on, to give you an example of how high school players in Texas have traveled a long way. We had three playing a world championship team for the Miami Heat. Uh, Richard Lewis, a high school All-American player of the year, and uh, he was one of them, Chris Bosch, uh, from Dallas, and then we also had uh, the Birdman, Chris Anderson from Iola, Texas, small school that 
He played at Blinn Junior College. He was not drafted, and um, he went on to go overseas, play for China, and came back and, and still playing today. Great defensive player. Uh, this mannequin depicts Randy Carlow from Lipan High School, the Indians, number 20. His uniform when he took his team to the state championship. He owns a distinction of having a national record of making 514 three-pointers in his high school career. Pistol Pete Maravich, one of the best all-time players ever in basketball history. Uh, Pistol averaged 44 points a year for three years when he's in, in LSU, and uh, then he was drafted by the Atlanta Hawks, was the first player to make a million dollars and uh, went on to be an outstanding player and, of course, a Hall of Fame member at the age of 40. He died at 40 from a heart ailment that they didn't discover until after he passed on. But a great player. He was doing things before anybody else ever thought about doing them. And a uh, flashy assist man. And all his points were scored before the three-point line, which is just unbelievable. But a legend in his time, for sure. And his dad, Pete, who coached him at LSU, uh, he wound up passing about six months later after Pete passed on. So, but these are, I worked, I worked a clinic with them one time and uh, they asked me to work with them and uh, I really appreciate enjoying working with them for a week. It was really good. All right, Slater Martin played at Jeff Davis High School, was the first player and high school player to make it all the way to the NBA and to the National Basketball Hall of Fame. And he did this by, well, besides two state championships, he went on to the U University of Texas. And uh, he was, he was got a scholarship there, won a scholarship. He was five foot seven, weighed 145 pounds. In his first five games, he led the team in scoring and uh, they were undefeated. Then he was drafted, went in the Navy. He elected to go to the Navy after he was drafted for two years. He boxed during the Navy, they came back, and then went back to the University of Texas, was an All-American, led his team to the Final Four. And he's drafted by the Minneapolis Lakers, where he won four national championships, and uh, then went on to another national cha championship, or world championship in the NBA, excuse me, uh, with the uh, St. Louis Hawks. And uh, going to the board over here, We've got uh, Don Haskins, the second one. There's only six or seven that have been elected to the National Hall of Fame, which, which are big, biggest state. We've got a bunch of people coming up that will be eligible in the year, future years. Don Haskins won his only guy, only coach that won a national championship in men's division, Division I at Texas Western. Jody Conrad was undefeated at University of Texas. Uh, 2004, Clyde Drexler played at Sterling High School. And of course, he, he played on the team with, with uh, Elijah Wan, won a world championship. The whole team, 2007 Texas Western was inducted. 2013 Guy Lewis was inducted finally, a great coach from the University of Houston. Uh, we have memorabilia signed by Slater Martin, uh, high school ball there both years. We have autographs from Clyde Drexler, Akeem Elijah Wan, and uh, all the memorabilia right here is, is pretty much around the area based from Houston on out. This is our first uh, NBA championship trophy when it was back in the BAA in 1947. It was uh, won by the Philadelphia Warriors. And uh, you never see a trophy like that when it's built up like that all the way to the top. Over here we have a trophy dedicated to the coaches of one division one or or national titles, both men and women. All right, this is a trophy dedicated to our national champions from the state of Texas for both men and women. Uh, the first one being Texas Western, at, uh, and then going to Baylor with the girls, and then back over to uh, University of Texas with Jody Conrad. We also had Texas NIT Championship won by Abe Lemons, and we got one won by Drew. Scott Drew at Baylor. Uh, we have Marsha Sharp that won Texas Tech Championship. Gary Blair that won a, also another won a you know national title. Another one won at uh, Baylor. Um, 
national championship. And this is dedicated strictly to those teams in Division I that have won national championships. We have uh, a number of items. Here's a great ball right here. And it has Robert Hughes and uh, Bill Kruger, Morgan Wooten, and Robert Ralph Tasker. They all had over a thousand wins. They had a classic that's played up in Fort Worth, Texas. We've got I have the distinction of owning the only ball signed by Bob Knight twice. I was at a clinic and I asked Coach Knight, would you sign my basketball, which is an old seamless basketball, no laces. He said, agreed, so he signed it. And I looked at it and said, that didn't look too good. It's wrong color. So I went back and says, Coach Knight, would you mind signing it, sign it again for me? So I did in black, it pops out. So I'm, I'm probably the only guy that has the basketball signed twice by Coach Bob Knight. And he finished up his career at Texas Tech, which is really- Kind around like you just did? Yeah. Okay. Uh, on the wall here, we have a display of 50 years of NC2A national championships from the 30s on through the 80s. And I didn't have a display, place to display until I opened up this room and made space for them. And we have outstanding old pictures from many uniforms and examples of teams that played back in the teens and what they wore knee pads and how the uniforms looked and this type of thing. We have five slamming gentlemen. We've got lace basketballs. We have autographs of uh, Elvin Hayes and, and uh, everything you can think of in basketball memorabilia. We like basketball. And this, <laughs> I don't know if you can do this one. See this picture right here? Mm -hmm. This picture here is before the UIL. When the girls, talking about girls basketball, I found this. And this is a state championship in 1929 held in Fort, Fort Worth, Texas. It's got all the teams on there. And the picture is so good that you can just uh, take magnifying glass and see, and see what their shoes are because it took with a time capsule yeah, type yeah. thing. We have several balls displayed with prominent signatures. Uh, going with Dave Cowens, Rudy T, Robert Hughes, going down to the scoreboards, which is kind of unusual looking, the Naden, but that was one they had that was one too popular. This bottom one was more popular, had a cage in front of it, it's also Naden, it's from the 50s and 60s. And then we have one that's from the 30s that has a paper dial. What we have here is the 1930s, late 20s scoreboard it has a paper dial, and the numbers that reflect the score are actually driven by a solenoid on each letter. Really old, just a good, excellent old piece. The show you see below it is like a display for a sample of kids' shoes. It's not an actual shoe, but it's almost the size of Shaquille O'Neal's shoe, which would be about, oh, maybe take about four inches off there, and that'd be the size of his shoe, which is humongous. And then there's a bunch of games down there that I've collected over the years where they uh, actually shot and played fun games before, video games, way back. In this showcase right here, we have a jersey from Dunkelville High School with Sandra Meadows was the coach and uh, won several state championships. Also, we have Lita Andrews at Granbury High School and uh, legend there with over 1,416 wins across the nation in 49 years of coaching, and also was an excellent player for Granbury. In the middle, we have things dedicated to Coach Tony Maldon, which was a famous coach from Morton High School. And this is an example of some of the magazines that uh, Coach Bob Springer produced over his 24 years in doing the Texas High School Basketball Magazine, dedicated to the best players in the state of Texas.